Welcome back to more Planescape Torment Enhanced Edition. I'm Negative Zero. Thank you for watching. I hope you're doing all right. Well, we're still here in the marketplace trying to find Kosa Jai. It turns out, guys, it is the fish lady. She is, in fact, Kosa Jai. I don't know. We're looking for ink for old Memeth, and I don't know what the fish lady would have to do with ink, except for maybe like an octopus, you know, will shoot out ink from its guts as a defensive measure. But I did, I would never have picked this lady, but she is in fact Kosa Jai. Uh, so Mehmet said, do you sell ink? She sent me to purchase some. Ink? She chuckles. Nay, sir, I sell no ink. I sells just fish. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's what I thought. Are you sure Mebeth, the midwife in Ragpicker Square, mentioned you specifically? Heh. <laughs> well, Kosa Jai was me Dan's name and me grandmam's name. Grandam's name. So it could be any of us. Yet they're both in the, in the dead book, so only this Kosa Jai matters. No idea what she's on about. A midwife in the Picker Square, you say? She thinks for a moment. Don't know her, I don't. Great. All right, what are our choices here? So you don't have any ink. Yeah, we'll go with the first one. So you don't have any ink. Well, I can't say that's much of a surprise. I swear Mebeth is having me run in circles. And you know what? I do think that's true. Now hold on. Your midwife friend's not all wrong. I know how you can get ink. But it may not be the ink you're looking for. The ink I'm thinking of bleeds from the gills of a brogota fin. It does. But you don't have this brogota fin, do you? She frowns. I thing is, that fish's not for eating. It got a horrible taste, scalds the tongue. You can ask Miram. She pitches her fish cell down the street a southerly way. She cackles. She might have one of them fish you need on her pole. Well, I'll go seek her out. Farewell. We're looking for Miram now. Updated my journal. Great. Miram. A southerly way. Let's look at the map, make sure we're... Yeah, we could go either way. Let's go down here. To the right. Lady with fish. See, we can't... Okay, alright. These are harlots. Who are you? Oh, wait a minute. I think we met her before. Yeah, iron nails. This broad-shouldered woman is shuffling about amongst the huge beams lying on the street. She kicks at the beams while, with iron-shod shoes. Every once in a while, she bends down and wrenches a nail from one of the boards with her bare hands. She holds each one, each one up, appraising it, then drops it into a leather sling bag. Greetings. She straightens up, hearing your approach. She's smiling politely, but from her stance and the way her hand rests close to the hilt of her weapon, you can tell she's ready for trouble. You notice one of her eyes has a milky film over it. That's close enough there, Cutter. What do you need from me? I had some questions, like what you're doing. Well, let's start with who are you? She pulls three nails from her sling bag, tossing them, spinning into the air, and catching them in her palm. Iron nail, no, not iron nails, iron nails, they call me. She drops them back into the bag with a muffled clink. Why are you collecting nails? I sell them to a man named of Hamris in the lower ward, maker of coffins he is. Ooh. Really? Um, where does all this wood come from? She shrugs. Here and there, I suppose. Sometimes Dabas drop the stuff off, and I go through it before another pack comes to fetch it away. Probably rubble from the buildings or walls they're putting up or tearing down. Yeah, we know about the Dabas. Uh, we know who she is. Let's go more into into uh, what she's doing. She rolls her eyes. What did it look like I was doing, Burke? Collecting nails. And we know why. Alright, this whatever. This is fine. We're leaving. We need to find this other lady. Alright. So these are her... Oh, maybe... Are you the lady we're looking for? Oh, oh, hold on. This might be her. She's got the same uh, type of body as the uh, as old Mebeth and Kosajai. Yep, it's her. Well met again, sir. What can I do f Wait, we met? Have you... Wait a minute. Could you tell me of when you saw me before again? Oh, wait. This is the lady that told us we walked by with with friends and uh, there was a lady with us that was trying to talk to us that we were ignoring and so on. Okay, I think I think I remember that. 
Have you heard of a Bogota fin? I was told it bleeds ink from its gills. She blinks, then nods. Aye, that fish. That fish is a strange one, it is. Not many have heard of it, and less would want to eat it. Difficult to kill, and even in death, it still seems to live. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Now, Memeth has been having has been having us do stuff for her that is almost like, I don't know, like a, a, a lesson to be learned. We're like her apprentice, because she is going to teach us magic. But she keeps having us do these errands. And the last one was very specific. It was about the guy with the washcloths who had sort of burned himself out because he'd messed up his magic somehow. And this is clearly about the fish. And even in death, it still seems to live like us. All right, anyway, do you have one? Updated my journal. Aye, but the ink, you'll need something to carry it in. Have ye bowl or cup, perchance? Hmm. Or a tankard. Maybe one of the merchants is selling one. All right, let's go buy a tankard. Wait a minute, we were talking to the girl over here that was selling cups and stuff, right? It was this lady. The woman smiles warmly at your approach. Hello again, sir, and what would you like to purchase this day? Uh, what are you selling right now? Plates, cups, jugs, tankards. That's what I want. I need something to hold ink in. Do you have a tankard or a goblet for sale? She nods. Oh, yes, many kinds. They range in price from a few coppers to several hundred. Actually, give me the cheapest one. She raises an eyebrow. She reaches into a crate at her side and throws a battered looking tankard at you. It's covered in dents and its handle looks like it is about to fall off. Uh, this one looks like it was used on someone's skull. She smiles slightly. It'll do. Thanks and farewell. Updated did we even, journal. did we even buy it? All right, whatever. All right, I bought, I brought a tankard. Can I get the ink from the fish in it? She nods and plucks a fish from her pole. It twitches as she grabs it, then starts lashing about as she begins to twist it like a rag. She rings it until bluish-black ichor begins to trickle from the fish's gills. When your tankard is almost full, she relaxes her grip and throws the twitching fish into a sack at her side. Thank you. Updated All right, I job. think that's it. Let's get out of here and go talk to Mebeth. And finally learn some magic. All right. Oh, wait. Yeah, we need to go this way. There you go, Cutter. She's all yours. All right. All right, and we'll head right into Old Mebeth's place. Before we go see Sharegrave down here, I do want to explore this area a little bit. We haven't talked to... I, we haven't talked to everybody. Can we get in there? What's going Endure. on? Your no, 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 no. Be done. Hold on. I'm gone. There we go. All right. Mebeth, let's wrap this up. Mebeth is tugging at the mass of greenish lime starched rags you brought from Giscoral. She seems... Oh, yeah, the other thing was about... Let's see, we had to do three errands from her. One was the washcloth from Giscoral. The other one was about the seed from Mourns for Trees. I'm not 100% sure what that was about. Something about seeds and growing. Anyway, uh, I child, here's the ink you wanted. Wait, she seems to be purposely fraying the edges as if to peel them apart somehow. All right, anyway, here's the ink. Mammoth takes the tankard of ink from you, then sniffs it. Prime ink, fresh it is, aye. She nods at you. You've done well, child. All I've asked, now I ask ye again. After all you've seen, do you still want to learn the art? Yes, after all, after all, the guiding goal was of your errands was to test my persistence, was it not? Mebeth smiles and nods. Yes, mayhap, child, mayhap. And that's not all. You knew who I had to see to accomplish each errand, didn't you? 
Mabeth nods again, slower this time. Mayhap, child, mayhap. If and so, what did your senses tell you about them? Yeah, see, they all had lessons. And, well, okay, it's kind of obvious. We only have one choice. Morns for trees showed me that my beliefs affect the world around me. Giscoral taught me that ritual is a wasted effort if the purpose of the ritual is ignored. Miram taught me that no matter how much I think I know, there is still much I can learn from another's eyes. That is not what I took away from any of those people. I totally failed at this. But we'll go with this anyway. Mebeth is silent for a moment, then she walks slowly over to you and touches you on the cheek. Oh child, she sighs. Ye will be a master sorcerer one day, ye will. Ye have the knowing of it, yet. You've come to old Mebeth for help, ye have. What could a midwife teach such a one? Much, Mebeth. I want to learn all you have to teach. Oh, we got... We got 2,000 experience, and we got some unusable items in our backpack. So you'll walk the path then, Mebeth pauses. Pauses. Well, first things firstly, just having the knack for the art isn't enough. You need some means of giving it focus, usually spells. The spells are usually in a book, so the art demands you have a spell book, or it's like a four you can cast spells. Can you read? Yes. Then let's test it. Can you read this? Mebeth draws forth a small tattered card. It looks like a recipe. The writing on the recipe swims before your eyes, each symbol twisting out of focus whenever you try and read it. Almost instinctively, you relax your eyes, allowing them to take in the page all at once. We did this before with something about reading. Maybe the Tome of Book and Ash? Of Ash and Bone? I'm not sure. I don't remember. And the symbols suddenly bleed together. The recipe lists measurements, ingredients. It appears to be some minor divination. This is a minor divination, isn't it? It looks like it's a spell that allows the user to see the nature of an item, to see whether it's enchanted or not. Oh. Mebeth's eyes widen. Who are ye to test old Mebeth so? Are ye some fiend? Um, what's wrong? Updated my journal. Well, not expecting it, was I. She nods at the recipe, then plucks it out of your hand. What ye see, it's written in the language of the art. If you're not a mageling yet, it should be a... It should be all a swirl jumble of mishmash. She snaps her finger. Yet clear as crystal, you pluck the sense of it right up. Mayhap you tell old Mebeth why that is. Hmm. Let's go with the second one. I think I may have known once, but forgot. Seeing the symbols just jarred my memory. Or else a natural gift ye may have. No matter, no matter. Ye've just shaved seasons off your learning, ye have. Mebeth harumps. And I've been looking for someone to handle the chores around here. I had... Ah... Uh... Let's be nice to her. I, I like her. We, we can help her out from time to time. No, no. Uh, don't worry yourself about that, she frowns. Well, you can read spells well enough, but spells are no good to you without a book to put them in. And do you have one? Mabeth glances around the hut and... Then she catches sight of the black barbed picture frame you made. She picks it up carefully and studies it. This'll do. That thing, it's just a frame. Ah, but so are ye, child. Still holding the frame, she picks up one of the starched rags you got from Giscoral. With a yank, she pulls off the greenish starched surface film. It flutters in the air like a wispy bit of cloth. Whatever Giscoral uses in the wash, it works better than curing. Stretching and stoning does on a normal rag. Can't afford parchment. I can't. Parchment. She takes the starchy film and pulls it over the black barbed frame, latching the rag's edges onto the hooks around the frame until it looks like a small greenish-black painter's canvas. It's missing something. Well, it needs something to be painted on, which will be the ink from the tankard, right? She nods, I, or written on it. She takes the tankard of ink you've given her and sets it down next to her. She dips one of her fingernails into the tankard, then draws it out, mumbling to herself. She begins to scratch symbols onto the frame, one by one, still mumbling to herself. Wait. No, wait, I think that means I'm waiting a while. All's done. Mouth stands, drying her ink-stained fingernail on her robe. She tilts her head regarding the strange framed page in front of her. A page for your spell book it is. She indicates that you should pick it up. Let's do that. 
Inside your spell book are your recipes, your spells, if you will. As long as they sit in the book, though, they're just words. She taps her head. The art demands you pluck the magic out of the book, then put them in your attic. Your head, afore you can tap their power. Okay, go on. You put them in your attic by studying them, memorizing them. You usually need to rest first before you can do this, though. Any questions? Uh, no, I think we got it. Oh, no questions. Uh, well, now you should have questions. You know all's about how to memorize spells, do you? You're a sharp one. You sure don't need any more of Mebeth's words all a gobbin up your precious time. You're a master sorcerer already. <sighs> Forgive me, Mebeth. I meant no questions on what you'd said. Please explain how to memorize spells. Hmm. All right, then. Here's the dark of how you memorize the spells. Pick the spells you want to stick in your head from your spellbook before you goes to sleep. When you wake in the morn, they'll be buzzing in your head like flies ready to be let out. How many spells can I cast? You can only cast one, mayhap two spells, afore needing to rest again. As a tiny flitting mageling, there isn't much room in your attic. So use your spells wisely until you get wiser in the art. As your power increases, you'll get more room in your attic for spells. Alright, go on. You can only cast spells you've memorized, so if you want to use the art to say mend something twice, you need to memorize the spell how many times? You can only cast spells you've memorized. So if you want to use the art to say mend something twice, you need to memorize the spell twice. Right? Remember with nods, aye, twice, right enough. How do I get more spells? Updated my journal. Remember the shrugs. Keep your eyes and ears out for learning. Even common folks might have some minor magics to teach. There's also scrolls, recipes, books, and even some stranger items that have spells inscribed on them. We have the armor from the from the guys in the the uh, the giant skeletons in the mortuary, so we can also learn the armor spell. If you find one, just examine it close and copy it into your book if you want it. I got it. I can also show you more spells if you return, especially when you've a little more of the planes in you. I would appreciate that. Before you go, child, you'll need some magics for ye to whet your appetite. Mebeth rummages in her robe, then pulls forth three small recipes which she passes to you. You should copy these into your book so they can go into your attic as soon as possible. Thank you, Mebeth. Updated my journey. All right, what, what just happened? We gained a couple items and a lot of experience. Wait, there's more. Mebeth fishes a tiny bundle of black cloth from her apron and unrolls it, producing a pair of amber earrings. These will protect ye on your travels, child. I no longer wear them myself, so go ahead and take them. What What are they? Thank you. All right, child, don't tear here any longer. One such as ye has other ways to spend one's time rather than hang around old Mebeth. Uh, you're not so old. Ah, you flatterer, your tongue is so lined with silver it'd shame about a Batazu. Get ye hence. Oh, we uh we talked about Batazu with the lizard guys in the in one of the bars. Alright, thanks for everything, Mebeth. Pa, you can thank me by not playing the Addle Cove not playing the Addle Cove with what you've learned. The arts damned many a fool who sought to bend it in ways the art weren't meant to bend. Now, I don't what does she mean? I don't know. Anyway. Farewell. Okay, we leveled up, so let's go ahead and take care of that. Actually, I want to look in my inventory and look at these spells. Chromatic Orb, Identify, and Blood Bridge. Let's take a look at Blood Bridge. Blood Bridge allows the user to copy Blood Bridge in the spell book. Okay, let's look at the... This spell allows the caster to share a portion of his life with others, weakening himself and strengthening others. Okay, let's copy that. We learned the spell. Chromatic orb. 50 feet. Affects one creature. I, I guess we have to look at the spell itself. Alright. Um, look, I can no longer use the weapons. I can only use these ones. I still have my scalpel. Okay, and then identify. Uh, identify, I think is the one, the divination one about checking enchanted items. That's fine. All right, I think Mort has these. Let's take these two. Uh, 
Rune of Lesser Warding. It, it teaches user armor. And this one, see, we already know it. Yeah. Even, oh, wait. Yeah, I already have it. Okay. So maybe we can have this in our armor slot. We have the scalpel. Can this do anything? No. This is the logbook room. The amber earrings. Let's take a look at these. Plus two to armor class. Memorize two additional first level mage spells. Wow, we can put these on and learn more spells. All right. These earrings are made from hardened sap of the razor vine. When properly prepared, items made from this substance can be enchanted with powerful spells of protection. Well, let's put those puppies on our ear. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so scalpel. Yep, yep, yep. What else do we have going on here? Nothing. Oh, we can... Maybe we can have uh, Dakon teach us some stuff. Alright, uh, let's actually talk to him right now. What Dakon turns to you, his eyes like polished coal. His blade mirrors his eyes for a moment as you address him. Then he nods. What is your will? There are things I would know, Dakon. Can I talk to you about your teachings? I think that's what we need to talk to him about, about the spells. Uh, oh, he can't teach me anything of the art. That's, well, maybe, maybe. Know that the way of the people is not the same as the art you have come to know. It is not the energy that gives strength. It is the knowing the self that gives strength. The teachings of Zerthamon speak of such things. Okay, can you teach me the way of Zerthamon? Do you know what you have asked? The texture of Dakon's blade flows until it becomes a stone. To walk the path of Zerthamon, you must know of the people. The knowing of such things by one not of the people is a difficult matter. There are those not of the people who have heard the way of Zerthamon, but they do not know the way. Hmm. Interesting, Dakon, I want to know of the people and know Zerthamon's teachings. I believe there is wisdom to be learned in such things. Updated my journal. Know that I have heard your words, and I shall test them. To learn, you must know the people. To know the people, you must know the unbroken circle of Zerthamon. Dakon holds up the stone disc in his possession, and his spider-like fingers hook into its sides. There's a click, and the plates of the circle slide into a new configuration. He reverses the motion, sealing the stone. Know the first circle of Zerthamon is open to you. Study it, and I will hear your words. I will read the first circle then. In the meantime... Okay, very well. I will examine it, then speak with you again. Does that mean I have something in my inventory? Or maybe I look at his? I'm not really sure how that works. Okay. What we're going to do is level up. All right, so we're a level one mage, and we have tons of experience, so let's level up. Uh, spell memorization abilities increased. Zero characteristic points gained. Oh, we don't get any points, and we only got two hit points this time. And mages get less hit points. That makes sense. Let's look at the... Nope, that's everything. No thief skills. And now we need 10,000 to get to mage level 3. Oh, I guess we're level 2 mage. That makes sense. Okay, we need to look at our spell book. Right? We need to decide what we're going to learn. Looks like we have four slots. Two, I guess, because we're second level. I wonder if I bump up intelligence enough if I'll get extra slots. Okay, we definitely want chromatic orb. Right? That's an attack spell. Long are the debates about the spectrum of color in the multiverse. This blue is better than yellow. Pike at Burke. Of course, white is the true color. And while in the end, many generally, generally agree that a color's greatness is in the eye of the beholder, this spell establishes the fact that some colors are deadlier than others. This summons a large magical orb of color, which can be hurled at a target using the caster's normal attack roll plus three. The color of the orb changes depending on the caster's level. Level 1, 1 to 4 points. Okay, so the higher level you are, the more damage it does. 
special power minus four attack minus four strength. Okay, so this affects whatever we hit. And level two for 10 seconds. Oh, I wonder if it stacks. Because this... Or are these the level of the spell? I'm not sure. But we're level two. It's red, one to six damage, and it takes away strength and a dexterity. I'm not really sure. Uh, but let's learn this. Let's learn two of these. Armor. Ah. Let's learn three of these and an identify. I'm sure we'll come across a magic something as we go along. Yeah? Yeah, I think that's good. Who needs armor? Alright, so I think I can rest here. Uh, I'm in need of healing. No, can I rest here? She nods, of course, child. I have a mess of blankets in the corner that would serve. And thank you very much. All right, we rested for eight hours. Wow, eight hours? Okay, and I learned my spells. We're ready to go. All right, what I want to do before we... Oh, oh, wait, what? Nod. As you approach the hooded round man... Oh, I must have accidentally clicked on him. You notice that he's mumbling to himself softly and occasionally nodding. He's named, so... Someone comes to speak... Someone comes to speaks to nod. Speaks to nod, I... He suddenly breaks into a fit of hacking coughs, then nods to himself. What are you doing? Nothing, except looking for debtors. Nothing else. He sniffs, then gives another hacking cough. He mumbles for a moment, then speaks again. Nothing else. Need the jink. Jink, jink. All right, well, he... I think we know all this already. Right, thank you. All right, what I do want to do... Oh, wait, wait. Eh, eh, he shakes his head, coughs, then resumes his nodding. Yeed ask a nod, I nodded ask a ye. Question for ye, I, I. Go ahead. Ask your question. Nod has his, oh, okay. Nod has his sister, I. Amaris. Amaris lives in the hive, away from here, away from the square. So long, long ago, Nod was separated from his sister. Taken away. This sounds like a side quest. You've been separated from her, and you want me to find her? Updated my job. You don't know her? He shakes his head, sadly, for a moment, chewing his lower lip. If he sees her, if he does, tell her not. Her brother worries about her. Aye, he does. He worries. Why don't you go find her? No. Nod covers his head with his arms, mumbling to himself. Nod. Nod can't speak right no more. He can't. Nay. And he smells the corpses in the dirt of the square. Ragpricker Square. No. The outburst sends him into a fit of hacking coughs. What happened to you, Nod? Nod sniffs, looking at the ground quietly. Finally, he begins nodding to himself, speaking softly. Nod was young, aye, he was, and started hearing voices, telling Nod to do this. Do that. Bad things, bad, like chewing on Nod's fingers. He holds up his hands to his face, and you can see old bite scars beneath the caked-on filth. Go on. So Nod's parents takes him the ways they does, puts him in a dark place, a winged tower, where they pokes needles and hooks into Nod's heads. Head. Voices stop, aye, they do, but Nod can't think right, can't talk right. Nod escapes the place he does, wakes up in the hive. Aye. Where is this wing tower? Don't know, don't know, bad place, bad. He shakes his head violently, clutching at his temples. Go on with your story. Nod wakes up, there's collectors, aye, collectors, poking at Nod, saying, Look, not a debtor, debtor he's not. Takes him back, takes him. And then... And they takes Nod, Nod's back, they does, back to the square. So long, years, long years ago. All right, I'll find your sister. Nod thanks he, he does, Nod thanks he. Amaris was pretty, so pretty, lives in the hive now. Fair skinned she was, hair like jet, and always in blue, blue, she was always in blue. So we're looking for someone dressed in blue. All right. What I want to do is I want to look around... And I want to talk to everybody before we go see. Like, we need to... I don't know if we know, need to go to the trash uh, warrens. But I want to talk to all the people on the street. Because we almost missed 
Like, let's talk to this guy. We're being watched. Marrow friend. Just look natural. Uh, casual. <laughs> okay. Um, we want to talk to everybody because we almost didn't get Dakon as a as a party member because I didn't notice him the first time I was in the uh, Smoldering Corpse bar. So I want to talk to everybody just in case there's anything special, you know, we can find out from them. Anyways, this guy's named. His name is Marrow Friend. You can smell the reek of dung and rotting meat on this man, even from afar. Oh, that's that's terrible. Though obviously weak and decrepit, his long, thin fingers and sunken eyes give him a sinister look as he scuttles through the garbage around him. The way he drools and rolls his eyes makes you wonder if he's mad. He's just the kind of guy we want to talk to. He tries to focus on you, but his gaze wanders. His eyes are set deeply into hollow sockets, and his skin is terribly pale and diseased, covered with rashes and yellow patches that look ready to peel from his body at any moment. The stench emanating from him is terrible. As you open your mouth to speak, he licks his lips and swallows. You debtor? No, I'm, I'm not a debtor. Are you all right? You... He licks his lips again, and his long, spindly fingers pick at his skin as he stares at you. You deader? He glances to your left, and then his eyes dart back to you. Dead? Dead? Hungry. Oh, 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 buddy. He reaches out to touch you, licking his scabrous lips. I'm going to let him touch me. This smelly, gross, disgusting guy. His fingers scrabble spider-like on your arm as if looking for a piece to tear off. He licks his split lips again, and you watch yellowish drool drip from them with a raspy moan. His fingers suddenly dig into the skin on your arm and pull off a bit. Uh, I'll step back, but I'm not going to leave yet. I feel like he's going to do something for us. You watch and feel your stomach churn as he takes the bit of flesh and shoves it into his mouth. He chews it slowly, then swallows. Uh, no... He, uh, you dead? No. I'm, I'm not dead. You taste dead. Oh, that's gross. That's so gross. Ah, uh, Marrow friend. Um, he scratches himself beneath his robe, and you suddenly notice that he has a finger hanging from his neck on a cord. It looks like there is a ring on it. What is that finger bone? He looks down, his plague-ridden features twisting into a ghastly, snaggled-tooth parody of a grin. Snack! He looks ready to chew on it. Hold, hold on. Maybe... Are we trying to get the ring? Maybe that's... I'll bring you a whole body? No, I'm not going to do that. I... This is so bizarre. I'm going to let him have another bite of me, and then maybe I can trade him for the finger? This is so weird, but we're going to do it. He smiles and reaches for your outstretched hand. Give me the finger for... Hmm. You know what? I'm going to let him bite me. His teeth, his teeth sink into the meat of your forearm and pull a chunk away with a single wrench of his neck. The pain is excruciating, but Mara Friend sits on his haunches as if nothing had happened, chewing noisily at the mouthful of meat he pulled away. Now, give me your finger. Oh, buddy. He clutches the finger bone to his chest, looking up at you pitifully and shaking his head. No, hungry! I'll let you have another of mine if you'll give me the finger bone. I'm... Are we literally trading my own body parts? I think that's what we're doing. This game, man! This game! He nods greedily and lets you take the finger bone. Alright. Third one. I hope... I, I, we might have to go back to Mebus for healing. His teeth sink into the meat of your forearm and pull away a chunk with a single wrench of his neck. Okay, we, we already read that. All right, thanks. Farewell. All right, did we get... The finger bone. This is a decayed and nearly meatless finger bone from a humanoid of roughly your size. There is still some sort of odd ring on the finger. It is an intricate thing sculpted with... Dozens of tiny, ornate flanges and decorative protrusions. Oddly enough, it seems firmly rooted to the finger, and no amount of pulling or prying will budge the thing, almost as if the ring's jagged edges have dug into the lifeless finger itself and refused to release it. So... So do we have to put this finger 
on our own hand. No, it doesn't look like there's a place where we can do that. Hand. No. Hmm. Use? This is a well-decayed, nearly meatless finger bone from a humanoid. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Oh, uh, hmm. Pull the ring from the finger? Are those my only choices? Huh, I'm not sure what to do. You know what? Well, I was going to say we can wait till next time, because I want to think about it. I was thinking that we would attach the, like we put our eye in, I was thinking that we would be putting the finger bone in like, obviously that's not a tattoo. Left ring? Right ring? No, maybe not. Okay, well, let's do it. Let's do it. And right, well, this will be the end of the video. We're going to use it. Okay. And we're going to pull the ring from the finger. Try as you might, you cannot remove the ring. It's almost as if the ring's sharp edges have dug into the lifeless finger. You have an odd feeling about it, however. Yeah. Yeah. The, I knew this was going to happen. We're going to take off our own finger and replace it with the finger bone. We're doing this. This game. <laughs> this game. You place the ring finger of your left hand in your mouth, close your eyes, take a deep breath, and bite down as hard as you can. There is a sickening crunch, and you are overcome with a taste and smell of blood. You split you spit the bloody finger out and place the rotted, ring-laden finger bone against the gushing stump. I love this game, man. I love this game. At first, nothing happens, and you are horrified at the thought of what you've just done. Yes. Yes, I am. Suddenly, though, you feel a strange tingling sensation as bones fuse and tendons re-knit. In moments, the rotting finger bone has become a living part of your body, though it still throbs painfully. The jagged ring suddenly loosens and slips off into the palm of your hand. We're done. We are going to probably identify... Oh, wait. Oh, hold on. Mempa's biting ring. Mempa was a mage. Upset. We somehow identified it. Mempa was a mage obsessed with the possibility of having her magic items lost or burgled while she was asleep or otherwise incapacitated. While the vast majority of her carried possessions were inseparable from her corpse and thus buried with her, some of her weaker items, early experiments perhaps, were left behind and remain in the world of the living. Mempa's biting ring, whose powerful aura protects its bearer from bodily harm, is one such item. However, once placed upon one's finger, the ring bites down and holds on so tenaciously that it is nigh impossible to remove it from the bitten digit. So I guess once we put it on, it's on forever. And we'll decide whether or not we do that next time. Thank you so much for watching. Boy, that I knew I wanted to talk to the people around here, and that's just like the first guy. We're going to talk to everybody else, and then we'll finally go see Sharegrave and deal with Farad. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Take care.